You want to know what makes Freddy Krueger so scary? I mean, other than his obvious need to moisturize? He's unavoidable. As unavoidable as death, taxes, and Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey news stories. All he needs to be able to heinously take you out is for you to eventually sleep. And everyone sleeps. Everyone also poops. But they haven't made that movie yet. Just a really well-marketed children's book. See, you can physically escape Michael Myers. Hell, the guy can't even run. He power walks, like your grandparents in the mall before the shops open in the morning. You can escape Jason Voorhees by simply wearing his dead mom's clothing and bossing him around. Some people would just call that a nice Friday night in. Possessed? Call a priest. The only number you're calling if old Fred Krueger wants to get all up in them dreams nice and deep-like is 1-800-YOU'RE F***. So where did this crispy skin dream demon come from? What motivates him to horrifically mutilate, dismember, creep out, and sometimes eat his victim's souls like meatballs? Excuse me, not like meatballs, actual soul meatballs. Welcome to the best of the worst, where we take a hard look inside of the gnarliest protagonists in our favorite movies on a category by category basis. Where they come from, what they've done, what makes them tick, and what they may do next. Tune in next week for our special on David Zaslav. Just kidding? Today we're exploring all the gruesome wonder of our fedored friend Freddy Krueger. We'll take a look at Fred's best kill, his best quote, his scariest, coolest, and meanest moments throughout all nine of his feature films. Yes, even the remake, where his face looks like Jim from American Pie had his way with a bowl full of CGI spaghetti. Let's start with Freddy's best kill. Nobody, and I mean nobody, kills like Freddy. In the dream world, he is capable of things other horror icons could never even conjure. Especially not Jason. He can barely work a doorknob. Freddy doesn't just kill with creativity, he gets nasty with also something he did with Jason's mom. Over the course of just the first six films, Freddy Krueger dispatches his victims by sucking out their souls out of their mouths, stuffing them with food, turning them into cockroaches, trapping them inside their own waterbeds, melting them into motorcycles, shooting them up with drugs, turning them into blood geysers, killing them in comic book form, sucking them through tiny door holes. Holy hell, do you get the point? Freddy Krueger's got a Golden Corral buffet of options to choose from when it comes to your favorite kills. But what is Freddy's best kill? That comes in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. <laughs> when he takes Philip, played by Bradley Gregg, for a tiptoe through the tool. Oh my god, that's the ledge of a roof. In the scene, Philip is sound asleep when Freddy inhabits one of the puppets hanging from his wall. It's a very Wallace and Gromit moment if Wallace and Gromit were handcrafted by Satan in hell. What's funny about this scene is that nobody even saw Freddy doing this. He's literally doing it for his own enjoyment. He gets bored of himself, however, and quickly grows to full size, like my problems when I try to bury them deep down. What? I... Never, ne never mind. Philip wakes up and he's unable to move or scream as Freddy, while laughing, removes his bed sheets and starts slashing away. The camera pans back to reveal he's cut large incisions in each thigh and forearm, which sucks, but as a Sunday on the golf course, drinking pina coladas with the entire Dallas Cowboys cheerleading squad compared to what happens next. Yes, that was oddly specific. Mind your business. The tendons and muscles are pulled out from his boo-boos while still attached and then begin to walk him around the hospital, looking like me drunk at 3 a.m. trying to find the water in the pizza rolls. The imagery's bad enough, but when you start to think about what that would feel like, it puts anything you saw in Hostel Saul or your parents' bedrooms to shame. Well, almost. Wow, that was a nice image. Deleted. Freddy leads Philip to the rooftop, and it is not to do a dramatic recreation of Chad Kroger and Josie Scott's Spider-Man 3 music video for Hero. When they say that I Even Freddy has his limits when it comes to torture. Philip, about to be walked off the edge to his death, looks up to the sky to see Freddy as big as a dead Mufasa or the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in the sky, puppeteering his half-severed veins from the clouds. It's an absolutely amazing shot that really shows off what Freddy's capable of if you're dumb enough to fall asleep on his watch. Not to mention a shot that still holds up special effects-wise today. It's just freaky in a hard-to-explain way. Freddy then cuts Philip's veins and watches him fall to his death as his friends look on. And of course, he laughs because, well, he's an asshole. So that was Freddy's best kill. What was Freddy's meanest kill? Well, that prize belongs to the forever underrated Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. As Debbie, played by Brooke Thies, hits the bench press. She falls asleep mid-rep. In a really cool shot, Freddy shows up in the reflection of her weights. I don't believe in you. She says as if she's auditioning for Hamlet. And Freddy says all too earnestly, well, I believe in you, before he starts pushing down on the barbell she's holding up. Here's where things get twisted sister on us. The weight bearing down on her is so strong that her arm skin starts to slowly rip off around her elbows in a surprisingly gooey fashion. She sits up with her arms flopping around on their hinges like an inflatable tube man before eventually severing completely. But wait, there's more. Much more. Out of the holes formerly known as her arms starts to grow cockroach arms or tentacles or something that's absolutely disgusting, whatever it is. All the while, Freddy stands there watching and laughing because, well, he's an asshole.
Debbie tries to run away and finds herself in some kind of corridor that's beginning to lift off the ground. She looks down and realizes there's sticky yellow goo everywhere as cockroach limbs continue to grow out of her skin. She falls down and her hair sticks to the goo as she lifts her head and oh my god this is so gross her skin rips off entirely to reveal a big sticky cockroach head. That's disgusting. Hi. Naked pics online? Where? Where did he post them? She's now full on cockroach. An eyeball fully encompasses the window as we realize she's inside of a roach motel that Freddy is holding and staring into. He says you can check in, but you can't check out before squashing it as yellow goo flies out. I haven't eaten a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles gas station handheld pie since. Or before. This is not only the most gruesome kill I can think of for obvious reasons, but also the most torturous, therefore making it the meanest. Imagine having your arms ripped off and then having them grow cockroach tentacles, and then having your skin ripped off by sticky goo. And then you think, hey, I'm a cockroach, but I'm still alive. Do I even want to be though? Let me think about dead. You're dead. Honorable mention for Mina's kill does go to the way Fred tortured poor Carlos, played by Ricky Dean Logan in Freddy's Dead, where he mocked him for having a hearing impairment before turning his hearing aid up to the level, holy shit, and then torturing him that way. It's bad, but it's still not quite a slow cockroach transformation. There's also that time he murdered a recovering drug addict by saying, let's get high, and pumping her arm veins with a lethal overdose. Did we mention Freddy's an asshole? On to Freddy's most badass moment. Freddy has quite the body count when you consider Freddy's Dead opens with an Oregon Trail graphic saying he's wiped out the literal entire child population of Springwood, Ohio. But his biggest on-screen body count moment happens to also be his most badass. The pool party and a nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. In this scene, a large group of teens are drinking, eating, and touching each other's body parts in all sorts of weird ways when Freddy literally jumps on the scene and starts disrespecting his surroundings. Disrespect your surroundings! Director Jack Shoulder and writer David Chaskin definitely did some disrespecting in their own right with Freddy's Revenge when it came to the rules of the character established by his predecessor, Wes Craven. But when this scene strikes, it's all worth it, if just for the moment. Freddy goes absolute ham sandwich on everybody at the party, slicing and dicing his way through faces, stomachs, and even a pool chair. What'd that pool chair do? Teens fall into the pool, which Freddy sets ablaze. Pockets of fire shoot out from all over like a Kiss concert, and he knocks over the grill and at least seven to 23 adult beverages before corralling all the kids up against the fence and telling them, This is one of the most iconic moments of the entire franchise. When one teen steps forward and does his best Hans, Bubby, Ellis from Die Hard impression and tries to negotiate with Freddy, Freddy hilariously says, help yourself fucker, before slapping him with a fistful of knives like he owed him money. Freddy in this moment was out there in the open in front of everyone, unlike poor Jesse deep down inside, and he absolutely made the most of it. None of these kids are ever gonna be okay again, even the ones he didn't fillet. Lest we forget Freddy's verbal prowess with his best quote. That guy had a way with his tongue. No, no, not like that. No, 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 not like that. Freddy has more one-liners than the Terminator himself, ranging from the iconic, this is God, to hilarious, Where do you little meatball. Hell, even 2010 managed to squeak out a classic one with, <laughs> We got six more minutes to play. <laughs> play. Freddy has more famous quotes than the Bible. So picking the best one was tough, but it had to be the one Robert England himself ad-libbed, Welcome to prime time, bitch, which is coincidentally what I say before I show a girl my comic book collection. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Also fictional is the next scene where Jennifer falls asleep watching TV. And it's really hard to blame her for it because she tried her best. I mean, she was putting cigarettes out on her friggin' arms like Judd Nelson's dad in The Breakfast Club on Christmas. The old man grabbed me and said, hey, smoke up, Johnny. Now in Dream World, she walks toward the television set nestled in the upper corner of the wall, more on that later, before Freddy's robot arms and head pop out of the TV set and snatch her up. Fuck the Before slamming her head inside of the TV, then he leaves her body dangling there like a human Christmas ornament. To this day, I will never understand why Neil, I definitely wear tidy whities and cry after sex Gordon, didn't think something strange was afoot at the Circle K when that little girl somehow spud webbed herself into the TV attached to the ceiling. But a great quote nonetheless, and one they used as a pre-title quote later in the franchise. How about Freddy's best look? From movie to movie, Freddy's look changes in the most subtle of ways. From his classic original look in Wes Craven's 1984 film to A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge with his darker, slimier, oozing makeup and FX, all the way to his modernized look in Wes Craven's new Nightmare, which absolutely looked badass if it weren't for those pleather pants. Dude's legs look like a Black Friday couch from Big Lots. Really, the look of Freddy will be in the eye of the beholder. Hell, I wouldn't argue with you if you said the coolest Freddy has ever looked was in the original when he rips his own face off just to mess with Tina for funsies. That was awesome. 
For my money though, he's never looked scarier than as full-on demon Freddy in Freddy vs. Jason. Not his overall look throughout the majority of the film, but rather a specific short-lived scene where he goes ultra red, hovers above a boat dock like a witch, and gets real freaking naughty. Woohoo! You like the freaky stuff, huh? This super red, extremely demonic and gnarly makeup. There's just something about seeing Freddy turning up the anger and malevolence to 11 for a moment, mixed with the bright red flesh tones that remind you this isn't video game Freddy anymore. What's wrong, boy? Miss your wake up call. But seriously, amazing work by the special effects team here. Great graphics. So how about Freddy's best death? Jesus Christ, is everything a competition with you people? The worst thing you can say about Freddy Krueger, despite what some of those silly ass sequels try to put him through, is that maybe he's too unstoppable. Even in the classic original, you have to admit the whole, just turn your back on him and show him you aren't afraid and he'll go away, and it was a total cop out. In Nightmare 2, they kill him off by, checks, notes, making out with him? Yeah, that's... Wow. His demise in Nightmare 3 is kind of silly too. When Neil, I'm definitely rude to food service workers Gordon, slaps some holy water on his corpse and he turns into a kaleidoscope. In 4, his reflection kills him even though we've confirmed he's seen it at least twice by now. You know what? Nobody can kill Freddy like Jason, so let's just go with Freddy vs. Jason. When Jason full on thunder punches his entire chest out with his own glove and then carries his head off for some weird reason. I mean, seriously, what are you going to do with that head, Jason? Put it next to your third grade swimming trophies? Just kidding. We know those don't exist. That being said, Freddy does wink at the camera as they walk away. Still alive. Other movies have killed him more definitively, sure, but in a world where King Kate's dog pissing fire onto his grade can bring this guy back to life, has anyone really ever killed Freddy? Kids. Other than the people out there right now deciding to actively not make more Freddy movies? Which brings me to the end of what's best about Freddy Krueger. Facts are he may just be the greatest horror villain of all time. He's not very killable, he's absolutely inescapable. His weapon of choice is original and iconic. He can be absolutely hilarious, which in the right hands manages to take absolutely nothing away from how frightening he can be. I said in the right hand, stop waving your copy of Freddy's Dead at me, Greg. He's creative, he's cool, he has cool makeup and special effects and a classic costume. Freddy Krueger is still one of a kind. Still an asshole, but one of a kind. Asshole.